Good afternoon, everyone. Something strange and unusual is beginning to happen in the atmosphere as this continuous sulfur dioxide emission from Hawaii is now drifting over to Asia. No abatement in sight. A look at some strange circular cloud patterns here off the Modis Aqua satellite. This has nothing to do with what you're seeing in the sulfur dioxide. But I bring it to your attention because in 535 AD there was a series of eruptions and when this sulfur dioxide pervaded the Earth's atmosphere, it changed plant life, the albedo from the clouds increased, decreasing yields, and then people became increasingly sick because they had difficulty breathing. Now we're supposed to believe the experts that this sulfur dioxide is not a problem. Go back to work, don't even think about it. So I'm asking the question to you right now. Should we continue to believe these experts? Because let's take a look at their track record so far. They've told us everything's all based on carbon dioxide and increasing temperatures. But when we look at the actual oscillations in temperature, it's more like the sun drives our climate than CO2 does. Why not here so you can see what I'm talking about? This temperature chart goes from 1880. You know, the global warmingists love to grab that 1979 to current data, which is over on the right side, so it shows the trend that they're looking for. You can disappear the Dust Bowl in the warmer than average temperatures in the 1930s, and you can also dismiss the cooling trend that went through World War II up into the 1960s. And what I mean even by that is there's now conjecture, even though there was a 13% increase in atmospheric CO2 from 1995 to 2015, this is what they call the pause. And all these global warming models that we've always heard of that dictate, oh, two, three, four temperature degree rises Celsius by the end of the century. Well, the bottom blue is actually the observed where we are, and this is actually pretty correct because we're at 0 0.02 above baseline. And all the models running are putting it at 0.09, 1.2 C, even the higher temperatures at 1.5 C by 2025, they're not even anywhere close. The new reports out just this week, did you know the greatest two year global cooling event just took place? I'm sure you didn't unless you're in this world following this type of news because the media just did not report on this. You have to understand the temperature drop that just occurred in the last two years, we have to go back to 1982 to find something similar with the trend. And dropping temperatures doesn't make sense either. I thought it was supposed to warm into infinity. So taking a look at the temperatures here, showing you a small glimpse 2014 to 2018. This is just a four-year window. And also when the media and scientists from the IPCC talk about the GISS temperatures, you should know that NASA and NOAA both have been manipulating these temperatures for quite some time. So a side-by-side -side comparison of prior to after changed, smooth, if you will, or whatever misnomer that they're using right now to just change information. The lexicon always seems to be changing as well. Bit greater detail here also going over to the NOAA site. Again, you gotta look at these NOAA temperatures and start to think how accurate are they? But they do reflect that drop in temperature, the steepest drop since we've seen since the 1980s. So I guess they couldn't mask it that much. And then coming over to Dr. Roy Spencer's site here, Lower tropospheric temperatures, those last temperatures I show you were the land and the sea. But you got to realize there's very few buoys out there to measure the total sea area. As well as continentally, how many temperature stations are measuring every even 10 square kilometers, even 10 square miles of our planet. Once you leave outside more of the United States and Europe, it gets out into areas that just aren't covered except by satellite especially down in Antarctica. They only have 208 temperature stations for an entire continent. I'm telling you again and again that it is warming down there to infinity. How can you possibly say that when there's only 208 temperature stations to cover an entire continent, at least as large as the United States? 
we see the same drop again, and when we're talking about baseline temperatures, 0.21. And Dr. Wahid Udin, as well, overlaying and correlating rises in CO2 from Mauna Loa with the temperature on our planet, taking you clear back to 1955. Now, do you see runaway temperatures? Global warming is not real. They're trying to scare you into a global tax. Fine. Let's look at some more numbers. I was told over these last couple weeks that the Arctic is melting, melting. It's a heat wave. It's, it's just unbelievable Arctic temperatures. Actually, that red line is the current temperature. The green line is the 1958 to 2002 mean average. And look at that red line. It's actually a little bit below temperatures there. So I'm wondering how this 80 degrees north up to the North Pole, up to 90 degrees, this whole circumference, the top of our planet literally from 80 degrees north to 90 degrees at the very North Pole is a little bit below normal temperatures. But the media is telling you it's above normal, and I just don't get it. And they keep going on and on about the sea ice. The red dot is the working model where it's the operational project, a little bit ahead of what's been recorded. Fine, when we're looking at smaller time frames, you see that something has just switched into the cooling. Why is there more sea ice now than there was in 2014 and 15? They keep trying to bring it back to something like 1970s and put this together. There has definitely been a shift. And also the Himalayan glaciers are growing now despite global warming, right off the telegraph. Great article, I've linked everything in the description box below so you can chase down all these articles yourself. You got glaciers growing again, snowpack, whether it be Europe, United States, India. And also we keep seeing all of these sea level rises across the United States and some places in Europe haven't risen that much. So I thought, let's look somewhere else, Bangladesh. It was supposed to be like the test case because it was so lowland and it's very gradual going up from sea level. So anything there would be affected first. Dr. Wahidu Din again coming out. This is May 8th of this year, absolutely stating there's no impact of climate-related sea level changes. Now, how is this possible? You've been told again and again that sea levels are rising, yet they're coming out now saying from 1984 to 2016, multi-spectral satellite imagery is saying no climate change related sea level. Everything is starting to fall apart. David Birch, I appreciate you putting this out here with the mainstream media storm intensity, not intensifying. And David Dilley said the exact same thing. These are the numbers for you. If storm intensity was increasing with CO2, you sure would not see a drop off and then a peak and then a drop off and a peak and then a drop off. It should have just been straight up like the CO2 as you see increasing to what, 404 parts per million? Now off of Mauna Loa, that should have been a following trend, but it sure is not. It has its own variability based on effects from our sun and cycles in our sun. I'm also going to drop you back here from Dr. Wahid Udin once more with a what's up with that article. They're talking about 2012 forest cover. The global acreage burned by fire was down 24% since 1998. And that's great. Let's mark that in time. We got these two dates, and then I'm going to bring you right up here. 2017. Wait a second. It's at or less those same exact numbers. And this is the area burned from 1926 to 2017. Let's go back into the Dust Bowl, far left of the chart here. 1930, 1932, 34, 36. Notice the amount of areas burned. They keep telling you in the media it's all because of you, it's because of CO2, you're causing the forest fire intensity. Not. We need to go in longer duration time frames and take a look truly at what's happening. Forecasting out, declines in temperature. We are in the grand solar minimum, which brings me back to the point of the video. I'm trying to show you that all these forecasts and all this information you have been fed your entire life so far if you're under 40 years old. Even if you're over 40, you started to hear it 40 years ago. It's always our fault. All these things are changing. It's CO2. It's you. It's you're driving the changes. I'm clearly showing you it is not. And everything we're being fed is not really a 100% truth. So when it comes to this and they're saying, oh, the health alerts issued as hazardous VOG from Kilauea spreads over to Micronesia and then over to Asia. 
And as this two eruption continues, and it's been going on since what, the 1980s? Now it's really amplified due to the intensifying grand solar minimum. What if this does not abate? What if this continues for two or three or four years more at the intensity in Hawaii it is? This sulfur dioxide is going to completely envelop the northern hemisphere. This is what happened in the late antique little ice age. They talked about sulfur dioxide poisoning, people trying to breathe, they had respiratory issues, the reflectivity of the clouds, lost crops due to sulfur dioxide is what they pinned it down to, and then they had two more major eruptions. So let's think of Kilauea as the first continuous sulfur dioxide smokestack from our planet. We already added a bunch of stuff up there with pollution in our own right. Not CO2, forget about that. We're talking about particulates. How, mu how much coal have we burned? How much pollution is there from ships traveling around our oceans? How much pollution is up there from all these jet aircraft zoom planet? Yeah, we made an effect on the planet. We sure did. We polluted it with particulates. CO2 is a different animal. That's a gas. But this sulfur dioxide cloud continuing to intensify you definitely need to watch this video, The Power of Volcanoes, Part 1, Years Without a Summer. And after you watch what happened in the 6th century AD about the effects in Constantinople, the effects across Europe, the effects across North America and Asia during this time, with the effects of sulfur dioxide from three separate larger eruptions, and you got to realize volcanic eruptions, usually there's a boom and then the volcanic ash comes out and then phew, it subsides. What we have in Hawaii is a completely different thing. Is it, an, it is a continuous eruption, a continuous bellowing up into our atmosphere. And we're supposed to believe the experts that, oh, there's nothing to worry about. Don't think about it. Just go back to work. Watch your TV. It's all good. We Believe us. We're the experts. Yet I'm looking at these same experts going, wait, you've just given us bad information after bad information, a forecast after forecast that has never come to fruition. Especially that bad call by Al Gore saying snow would be a thing of the past. Your children will never know what snow is. And here we've had one of the snowiest winters in the last 40 years. So my odds are now on the historians, the astrophysicists, and the scientists that are saying grand solar minimum coolings here, intensifications here. Look into a history book and see what happened before. And here we are. Round 2.0? I don't think so. We're probably at round 3,700.0 or something because it's a cycle. It's been a cycle for hundreds of thousands of years. And we're just into it again. And I do thank you for watching the video. hope you got something out of it. I really encourage you to watch that YouTube video about the years, plural, without a summer. So you can see how sulfur dioxide affected societies at the time. Took down empires. And what's going to happen if this eruption just does not stop over the next couple years in Hawaii? This video has been brought to you by TrueLeafMarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet. Links below in the description box along with all the other links to the story that I brought to you tonight. This is the Adapt 2030 link, TrueLeafMarket.com.